Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship. We're a church located in the Coney, the Coney Island section of uh, Brooklyn, New York City. And it's time for today's daily devotion. This is where we take a chapter from the Bible and we read it together. We post these videos five days a week. You can access them at any time. And if you know anyone else who might be blessed by accessing them, please feel free to, uh, to share any of these with anyone that you know. We're going through the Gospel of Luke at the moment. I'm just turning there. Luke's the third book of the New Testament, third in the order that they're uh, in, the, uh, in the order of the New Testament. It's the third Gospel. It's one of the synoptic Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke are called the synoptic Gospels. Uh, They're very similar. Today we're reading Luke chapter 16. And uh, about the same length as the previous chapter, 31 verses. past few chapters have been a little shorter in the few preceding chapters. In Luke chapter 16, we have the parable of the shrewd manager. So in chapter 15, we saw three parables about heaven's celebration when somebody comes to the Lord. In Luke 16, we have a parable of the shrewd manager. We have a parable of the rich man and Lazarus. And those two are our only subsections in this chapter. Let's read Luke chapter 16. It begins this way in verse 1. Jesus told this story to his disciples. There was a certain rich man who had a manager handling his affairs, and one day a report came that the manager was wasting his employer's money. So the employer called him in and said, What's this I hear about you? Get your report in order because you're going to get fired. The manager thought to himself, now what? My boss has fired me. I don't have the strength to dig ditches, and I'm too proud to beg. I know. I know how I'll ensure I'll have plenty of friends who will give me a home when I'm fired. So he invited each person who owed money to his employer to come and discuss the situation. He asked the first one, how much money do you owe him? And the man replied, I owe him 800 gallons of olive oil. And so the manager told him, take the bill and quickly change it to 400 gallons. How much do you owe my employer? He asked the next man. I owe him a thousand bushels of wheat, was the reply. Here the manager said, take the bill and change it to 800 bushels. The rich man had to admire the dishonest rascal for being so shrewd. And it's true that the children of this world are more shrewd in dealing with the world around them than are the children of the light. Here's the lesson. Use your worldly resources to benefit others and make friends. Then, when your earthly possessions are gone, they will welcome you into an eternal house. If you're faithful in little things, you'll be faithful in the large ones. But if you are dishonest in little things, you won't be honest with greater responsibilities. And if you are untrustworthy about worldly wealth, who will trust you with the true riches of heaven? And if you're not faithful with other people's things, why should you be trusted with things of your own? No one can serve two masters, for you'll hate one and love the other. You'll be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. The Pharisees, who dearly loved their money, heard all this and scoffed at him. And then he said to them, You like to appear righteous in public, But God knows your hearts. What this world honors is detestable in the sight of God. Until John the Baptist, the law of Moses, and the message of the prophets were your guides. But now the good news of the kingdom of God is preached, and everyone is eager to get in. But that doesn't mean that the law has lost its force. It's easier for heaven and earth to disappear than the smallest point of God's law to be overturned. For example... A man who divorces his wife and marries someone else commits adultery. And anyone who marries a woman divorced from her husband commits adultery. 
Jesus said there was a certain rich man who was splendidly clothed in purple and fine linen who lived each day in luxury. At his gate lay a poor man named Lazarus who was covered with sores, and as Lazarus lay there longing for scraps from the rich man's table, the dogs would come and lick his open sores. Finally, the poor man died and was carried by the angels to be with Abraham. The rich man also died and was buried, and his soul went to the place of the dead. There, in torment, he saw Abraham in the far distance with Lazarus at his side. The rich man shouted, Father Abraham, have some pity. Send Lazarus over here to dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. I'm in anguish in these flames. But Abraham said to him, Son, remember that during your lifetime you had everything you wanted and Lazarus had nothing, so now he is here being comforted and you are in anguish. And besides, there's a great chasm separating us. No one can cross over to you from here and no one can cross over to us from there. Then the rich man said, Please, Father Abraham, at least send him to my father's home, for I have five brothers, and I want him to warn them so they don't end up in this place of torment. But Abraham said, Moses and the prophets have warned them. Your brothers can read what they wrote. The rich man replied, No, Father Abraham, if someone is sent to them from the dead, then they will repent from their sins and turn to God. But Abraham said, if they won't listen to Moses and the prophets, they won't listen even if someone rises from the dead. Let's see into Luke chapter 16. There's a lot that we... uh, There's a lot of teaching here to unpack. We we, We won't unpack a lot of it just for the sake of time. These videos are not meant to be a commentary. They're really just meant to read the Bible together. Uh, I will highlight, though, here uh, just the value that Jesus places on honesty and integrity. Um, And he mentions honesty and integrity in the small things particularly. We can't be trusted to be honest in the small things. How can we be trusted with big things? You know, sometimes there's a temptation to fudge a little bit, as we say in colloquially, um, in, in the small things. Sometimes like the means justify the ends, that kind of thing. But I don't think anything, I think what Jesus is saying here is, um, you know, nothing is really worth selling our integrity over. Um, I'm thinking of an interaction I had with someone uh, in the past week who, Uh, We met at a certain place. We arrived there separately, and this person uh, pulled up. And um, I shouldn't say this because this is a common practice here in New York City. Uh, We have probably the highest automobile insurance rates in the nation. Uh, Pretty close to it, if not the highest in the nation. And uh, this person pulled up with uh, out-of-state license plates on the car. It was from from a state uh, several hundred miles away. And uh, my father lives near that particular location. And so that was kind of a point of conversation. Oh, wow, you have these plates on your car. Are you, what, what what's going on? Are you from there? You live down there? What? Uh, and the person said, no. Uh, I'm just trying to avoid, I'm trying to save money on my insurance. And uh, while that's a common practice, it is illegal. And um, the reason we were meeting is because we had some business to do. And I thought, hmm, I'm not sure this is the kind of person that I want to do this business with. Because 
if they can't be honest in this small thing, like, you know, you, are you going to sell your soul over $50 a month in car insurance or whatever it is? Um, how can I trust this person? This person was, the business that we were going into was they were going to uh, be my advocate in a, in a certain transaction. And I thought, wow, I'm just not sure this is the kind of person I want to lay my trust on. Is there being unfaithful in the small things? Can I, can I trust this person with something bigger? I think that's Jesus' message here. Uh, I digress. Um, sorry to get off on a little bit of a tangent. Thanks for being here for uh, Luke chapter 16. Hope it's blessed you. Hope it's challenged you to be faithful in the small things. I hope you join us again next time for Luke chapter 17. God bless you.